All right, so welcome to Open House. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, <clears throat> and to those uh, watching on Facebook, we are happy that you are here too. Um, let's open with a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Father, I love you and bless you and thank you so much, Lord, for all that you are. And I thank you, Father, that you are going to meet us here. And I thank you for this beautiful space of our steps. And we just thank you. We bless it, Father, that while we're here, that um, this house has received this extra favor and blessing because we are just here as simple. So I bless you, Father, for descending and anointing, Father, to teach and to destroy yokes and um, to dismantle any false thing we have put in that place. And Lord, we just replace it with truth tonight as we talk and um, finishing the subject about trust. And so I just thank you for this sacred moment, this space, Lord. Encounter us here, and we are so grateful for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. So I have two announcements. One I'll make at the very, very end. Uh, this one I'll make at the front end. Officially, as of 7 o'clock, Partner Track is officially live. Yeah. And so if you need that packet tonight, I have those available, so you can make sure you can take those with you. I think Jacoby said I'd be the only one that <laughs> you can actually get to get there. So, congratulations, you won a packet of information. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, remember, remember, partner track is uh, at your own pace. Um, however, don't lag with it, okay? Get it done. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so, then you can go through, um, you and as well as others will go through um, the next part four with Mama Sharon. Um, by the end of the month, we should be rolling with our first Zoltarian, okay? All right. So... I'm excited about that. It's been a long time coming, my lord. Um, so that's officially done and ready to roll. Now, part of track is open to everybody. Anyone can watch those videos. It, and it's just basically the new member on onboarding process, okay? So if you want to watch them, everything's in the app, okay? You just go to the app, and you, it's a big old thing there. It says part of the track. You can watch it. So anyone can watch it. Um, but, of course, every new person that comes in has to go through that. But, of course, if you want us to refresh your on what we believe and all the kind of stuff. Part of track is new compared to what we how we did new members at the beginning. So if you do want to watch it, I would encourage you to watch it, but it's not mandatory for you to watch it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to in, in your free time. Um, and again, it's just right, um, excuse me, right in um, the Church Center app. So if you open Church Center, um, I'm making sure it's there too. Media, and then right at the top, you should see yes, partner track. You click that. And all the episodes are there. Step one, step two, step three, um, all that. If you actually, if you go down, to, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says re the recent series. You click on the recent series and view all. Um, it has them in order for you. Okay, and it's there. All the videos are there um, that you need. So in order. So welcome to part of track one, two, three, and four. And then of course step four of that part of the track will be. Um, um, so Terry or Mama Sharon, and then um, step five is being a part of the church and joining other teams. Okay, all right. Um, hey Mandy, everybody say hey to Mandy. Hey, hey Mandy. Mandy. And uh, hey to all those tuning in on Facebook. All right, so we are good to go with that. Okay, so last week we started. We let's go through everything and build up to where we were last week. Okay, so the <laughs> I feel like we've been. <laughs> on here for like 900 years. Um, so we've been talking about trust and the importance of trust. We started talking about um, why we can always trust God in every area of our lives. We talked about that. We talked through the benefits of trusting God. We talked through what God has planned for our lives will continually involve taking steps of faith. Um, we talked through, um, hey Toya, we talked through um, uh, the importance of building our lives based on the promises contained in God's word. Uh, we talked through we need to simply learn to become people of prayer who choose to ref and to choose to refuse to worry uh, about the things of life. And I think that's what we kind of got hung up on uh, in some scriptures in that. Okay, um, and then we're going to start today talking on, on our next point, which is the second to last, and then we're almost there. Okay, sir. Um, I think we did not get to this particular point, but we do have a God who always hears and answers our prayer, okay? That's first and foremost. We should know that. We have a God who hears and answers. And just because God has not said anything doesn't mean that he hasn't heard you. 
And sometimes when you don't hear anything, uh, <laughs> growing up, I remember like if I didn't respond to my mom, she would be like, "Did you hear me?" And I would say, "Yes, ma'am." And no matter if I was if I was mad at what she was telling me to do, I had to make sure I responded because first of all, that's respectful to do when someone's talking to you to respond. Um, and no response is a response, and it's that that is not always the best response. Okay, so, um, so when but when God does not respond, it does not mean that He's not attentive to you. It could be maybe He's just delaying His answer, so you can just learn to learn some probably one about some things about yourself, learn some things about Him, or maybe you got to go back and just kind of look through everything. I remember playing some video games back in the day, and when I played the video games back in the day. Uh, you could, I would make it to the end of the, the, the course and the door wouldn't open to the next place. And I always wonder why, but then when I looked back, um, when I looked back uh, in um, like the little areas, like where my missions, I realized I didn't complete something. So I had to go back, find that place I didn't complete, complete it, and then find my way back to. But sometimes his silence is because there's maybe one thing you need to learn. Or something you need to grasp before he answers, okay? And it's not anything bad. Sometimes it's God needs to make sure you learn everything before you move into or move on to something else, okay? And uh, oftentimes, like children of Israel, they wandered forever, forty years, around and around in a circle, big old new circle road. And the reason why they weren't able to cross over because they didn't learn that one thing, which was what <laughs> to obey God. <laughs> so that can be a big thing. So you got to learn. To obey him always. Someone say always. 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 Okay. So he hears and answers our prayer. But he hears and answers our prayer. That's why it's very important to understand this. He hears and answers our prayer in accordance to his will. Okay. In accordance to his will. If it's not in his will, he is not interested in it. Okay. And it's not anything bad. He's just not interested in it. He wants his will to be done on the earth. God is only obligated to protect and to respond to his will, according to his will. And that's, that's not anything bad. It just means that we need to be in, in alignment with him. You know the scripture I always use, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you what? The desires of what? Of your heart. That your heart, meaning that he will give you what when you have fully partnered with him in his will. Okay? So prayer is a key to seeing breakthrough. We all know that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Um, Jacoba, since you're right here next to me, Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 11. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. All right. <clears throat> Ask and the gift is yours. Seek and you'll discover. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For every persistent one will get what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for, and everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. Do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child, who asks for food, a plate of rocks instead? Or when you are going to ask for a piece of fish, what parent would offer his child a snake instead? If you, imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly take care of your children and give them what's best, how much more ready is your heavenly father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him. Yes. <laughs> Passion. Passion. Okay. So verse seven in every translation has the words ask, seek, and knock. Okay. I taught I taught on this SDA days. <clears throat> ask starts with the letter A. K, I mean S starts with the letter S. K starts with the letter, I mean, knock starts with the letter um, K. What's that spell? Ask. ask. Okay? So ask is the first one. However, those three words together spell the word. The first letter spells the word ask. That's the way into everything you need to. You just got to learn to ask. That's it. Okay? I'm putting strong emphasis on the K. <laughs> okay? Because my list, y'all think I'm cussing. But ask. <laughs> I had to make sure I say it. <laughs> Ooh, don't get a list, Saints. Don't get a list. Um, so I'm talking like you can go to the store and buy one. So ask <laughs> is something that we need to do. Learn how to ask. And the thing is that with that, don't be afraid to ask because something hasn't come through. Something feels delayed. 
something hasn't arrived or you haven't heard God in a while. Don't be afraid to ask. It is very important to continue to ask. Okay? Ask and the gift is yours. Seek and you will discover. Knock and the door will be open uh, to you just for funsies. I'll read it from the New King James. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find it. Knock and it will be opened. All right? It's just, those are just our actions. Ask, seek, knock. Actions. If you would just learn to do the action, you would always get a response. And the response, though, may not come in the way that you think it's going to come. And that's the tricky part. So when you ask, when you seek, and when you knock, you can't go into it with your type of expectation, but you should go into it with a God expectation. What is a God expectation? Anything can happen. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. Anything can happen. It's an endless possibility, and you never know. Okay? Make sense? Um, Matt and everybody, Ephesians chapter 5 Verses 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. <clears throat> yes. So be very careful how you live. Not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom. For we are living in, in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. And don't live foolishly, for then you will have um, discernment to fully understand God's will. All right. I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah, and don't live foolishly. Yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Okay. Um, but prayers to keep the seeing breakthrough and to making right choices in our lives that line up with the will of God for our lives. Okay, so we know we gotta be careful how we live, uh, not being those who uh, are walking around with no understanding because we do have understanding. Should, but we, and even if you don't have understanding, you still walk. The uh, King James says circumspectly. All right, that you walk right. Okay, even when you don't. So we're not to look as if we don't have any understanding or direction. We just keep going until he says, turn, stop, move, go this way. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Whatever it may be, just keep going. So that's a big thing to learn. Typically, we think silence means stop when silence means to keep going until he speaks again. And that's the truth, okay? There are times and moments where I've had to trust God because he ain't talking. He ain't saying nothing. But that doesn't mean I stop doing what I do, all right? I just keep on doing. I still go with the last instruction. God is always speaking. Whether it's a new instruction or a former instruction, he's still speaking, okay? Every instruction he gives you, gives me, gives us, is always um, has a voice to it. Even if it's, I don't want to use the word old. I'll just say former, okay? A former instruction still is a present instruction until something else comes about, okay? Make sense? So um, take full advantage of every day. As, uh, as you, and I really mean that. Take every day as if it's a last because you, ne you never know. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Treat every day like that. Yeah. That's legit. All right? There is, for me, there is no bad day because if, I, if this was my last, I don't want this to be, I, he left this earth in a bad day. I, that's not my story. All right? I'm going to live life and period. Okay? I don't got nothing else for you. Live it. Have fun. Even if you were in a, a, a pickle have find out the word you can have fun and dance on the pickle okay whatever it is have a time of your life because again you just never know or it's not even if it's not about you you never know when it's someone else's last day okay or something will happen and you wish you had that moment live life y'all i'm so serious when i say that live life we were talking about piercing early if y'all want y'all go get y'all piercing okay whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> um, but have, have at it my point is right my point is like just legit I will tell y'all the story afterwards because it's really hilarious no, no. <laughs> it's pretty funny <laughs> so yeah, see the visual <laughs> <laughs> um so just my point is have fun, have a good time. And it's so important just to have that good time, okay? So live life and don't live foolishly for then you will, um, don't live life foolishly for then you will have discernment to fully understand. I really think that is a, they're missing a word there. It just, it's not reading well for my mind. 
um, and don't live foolishly, for then you won't have discernment to fully understand God, okay? Yeah, so I think that's a thing. Um, so when you live foolishly, you can't discern what God's doing, and that's a fact, okay? All right, um, all right, now we are officially at number six, and after this we have one more, we have one more left. All right, number six is we need to be careful. We need to be careful, careful about what we listen to and focus on in our lives. We need to be careful about what we listen to and focus on in our lives. We need to be careful about what we listen to and focus on in our lives. Say one more time. We need to be careful about what we listen to and focus on in our lives. Okay. What's up, Jalen? So what we listen to and what we focus on has the ability to repurpose us in a negative way or a positive way. If you're focused on the right thing, you're going to be right. If you're not focused on the right thing, you're going you're gonna to be wrong. Now, we, our minds have the ability to call a bad thing good because of how it makes us feel. And so then we'll be like, you know, this feels right. So I'm going to do what feels right. Oh, rebellious tale. And we think that that is good. And because it makes us feel right. <laughs> I want both of you in your side. <laughs> Cough it up. <laughs> but when the, the truth of the matter is, it can feel right, but it does not mean it's right. It can feel good, but it doesn't mean it's good. Okay? You, have a, you raise your hand? Oh, okay. I thought I, I brought Richard. I'm sorry. So when if you think it's right, um, many are the plans of a, man, of a man's heart. Okay, many are the plans. We talk about that thing in, in here, but many are the plans of a man's heart. The heart has the ability to lead you several different ways, but only a heart that is submitted to God can fully understand what's the right thing to do and what's the not what's what's not the right thing to do. That makes sense. So we need to have people of faith that's speaking into our lives. You need the right people, the right circle. Without the right circle, you will try to contort that, that shape into something else, all right, or whatever it may be, all right? The other side to this is we need a solid community of people. And hear me when I say this, not several different types of communities of people that we, we choose the type of community that we want to be with based on how we feel that day or that weekend, okay? What I mean by that is like having friends that go to church, having friends that, that uh, like to go and just get wasted, and then having friends like you have these different groups of. The danger of that is that we live out multiple personalities in every single circle when in reality, God has only called us to live one life. Not several different other ones, okay? So when we do that or try to fix that up, um, we end up listening and focusing on all these different things and get all messed up, okay? So you got to make sure that you have the, the, you choose wisely who's a part of your life. And just because you're having a moment doesn't give you the, uh, doesn't give you the, the permission to mature that moment into something it should not be. Okay? Make sense? Yes? Okay, y'all laughing at Jacoby. No, we laughing at ourselves. <laughs> but, oh, Jesus, y'all. Ain't said we got some buckets here. <laughs> oh, y'all too? All right, Pro <laughs> Pro Proverbs chapter 13. Um, Kaylee, I'm going to pick on Forky. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. It may lose daughter in a minute. <laughs> I, hey, and Kiera. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. And then Kiera, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Proverbs 13, 20. And then Proverbs 12, 26. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, and then Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. If you choose wisely, you'll always win. If you don't choose wisely, you'll always be in war. Okay? All right, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Let's hear it. Walks as a companion with wise men is wise, but he who associates with self confident fools is a fool himself and shall smart for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Passion Tray uh, said, reads it if you want to grow in wisdom, spend time with the wise, walk with the wicked, and you'll eventually become just like them. Calamity, verse 21, calamity chases the sin chaser, but prosperity pursues the God lover, which means if you always walk right, the the things of God is always chasing you. You'll always collide with the right things. If you walk against God, you're going to find yourself kind of being in a lot of darkness all the time. It's not a good, it's not a good plan. All right, Kiera. My Lord. That's just just how it is, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. So Proverbs 12, uh, 26. One more time, Kier. The righteous choose their friends carefully, and the way of the wicked leads them astray. Yes. The other translation said, lovers of God give good advice to their friends, but the counsel of the wicked will lead them astray. That is, that is the, that's the, the, the beautiful danger of having the wrong people in the right seat. That makes sense? If you have the wrong the wrong people in right seats, you'll be led astray, okay? So you need a, a strong counsel. I only confide in a certain group of people, okay? Shara was one of those individuals. When something serious is going on, I'm going to confide in her, okay? I don't have a lot of serious things going on. When I do, I'll confide in her. I'll confide in my mom. Because those individuals have a certain place in my life that I can go to and seek counsel from if I need it, okay? So if something's going on, I'm going to bring it up. But here's the here's the understanding. But they're the right people in the right seats. If I choose some rando off the street and say, hey, what would you do with this life decision? And they say, well, I would just kill myself. And I just take that advice and roll with it. That's stupid of me to do that. <laughs> But it to them. But if I if, if I have them in an important seat, they'll think, "Oh, that's correct." You know what? Wow, that's a, that's a right thing to do, because you will get messed up. That's why it's important to know who's in the right seats. So we must not allow um, unbelievers to download on us in such a way that it becomes to undermine our faith. Meaning that whoever uh, that you are getting information from is important to make sure they have a relationship with God. Because the enemy will always try and bring wrong influences into our lives and make them feel like it's good, okay? So, uh, on step, grab Psalm 1-1. One, one. Psalm 1-1. One, one. Um, Mama Sharon, can you get Colossians 2, 6 through 10? Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. Isaiah, get Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. <laughs> All right, so Psalm 1, 1. <laughs> Colossians 2, 6 through 10. Matthew 7, verse 6. And Pamela Dorse Jean, if you can grab 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. 8 through 9, excuse me. All right, so Psalm 1, 1, Colossians 2, 6 through 10, Matthew 7, 6, and then 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. Miss Roz, I want you to grab um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. <laughs> 
All right, let's hear Psalm Psalm one one first. Remember, we're still talking about the carefulness of listening and focusing on the right things. Okay. All right, Psalm one one. This is the King James version. Uh huh. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Yes. That's how Psalms starts out. That's the first scripture in Psalm. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because that if that is if that is the foundational scripture to how the book starts, everything else will work out perfectly fine. Okay? Now notice in Psalm, David had a lot of back and forth conversation, I want to say, with his multiple personality self. However, <laughs> And him having conversation with himself, he did not have a whole bunch of outside influence of other people. His conversation and his battle was between him, who he wanted to be, and with the Lord. Okay? So it's very, but here's the, here's the danger of that, though. When you have what you want to be, who you were created to be, battling back and forth with that, you will always have a lot of back and forth with the Lord that's unnecessary. Okay, it's not that the Lord dislikes you or doesn't or does it's not talking to you. He's just not going to have conversation with who he didn't create. Good <laughs> poor things, y'all. All right, Colossians chapter two. Uh, Colossians two six to ten. Therefore, as you received Messiah and Yeshua as Lord, so continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith, just as you were taught, overflowing with thankfulness. See that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to, to the tradition of men and the basic principles of the world, rather than Messiah. For all the fullness of deity lives bodily in him. And in him you have been filled to fullness. He is the head over every ruler and authority. It's just that last verse for me, okay? Mm -hmm. The last verse. He is the head over it all, okay? All, everything. And everything under that <laughs> has no place because he is the he is the everything. One all be all, okay? Let's always say that. Let's just all let's all know that, okay? He is he is it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And it says, and ye are complete in him, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the head what? of the principality and power. What verse is that? 7, 6? Colossians 2. Colossians. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. I got it. So in him, there's completion. In him is everything. In him, you are finished. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to Matthew 7 and 6. That's from seven and six, okay. <laughs> uh, who would hang earrings on a dog's ear or throw pearls in front of wild pigs, but only trample them under their feet and then turn around and tear you to pieces? That's the passion translation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to. Go back, read, go back to verse four, Isaiah, and then read up to verse six. All right, read. How could you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong, when you're guilty of even more? Okay, pause. That, that one scripture, because you can't call out somebody else if you are guilty of the same thing, okay? Which is very, very much so true. I always like to say it this way. You lose power when you try to speak if you are dabbling in the same thing. If a piece is, if a piece of you was there, you don't got nothing to say. All right? You may be able to give some like little encouragement or some little hope or whatever else, but no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way because the enemy knows that he, have a, that he has a footing in that particular thing right there. So how can you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong. No, you, you guilty. All right, go to verse five. Read. You're being very, you're, you're being hypocritical and a hypocrite. 
first acknowledge your own blind spots and deal with them. <coughs> dealing with the blind spot of your person. Yes. Okay. Then you can deal with those things. But until you deal with yourself first, and it does not mean you're perfect. It just means you don't have a membership to it anymore. Okay? That makes sense? You got to catch it, you know? I catch it, but I want to catch it. Say it for me then. Verse 6. Then who would hang earrings on the dog's ear and throw pearls in front of the wild pigs? Because again, who does that? That's, first of all, it's foolish, okay? They'll trample it and then come tear you to pieces, which is my lord. All right. Um, then we get into the, the rest of what we talked before. Ask, seek, knock, and then doors will be open. All right. Um, who had First Peter 5? Okay. Uh, seek first vigilant. Yes. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in, in your brethren that are in the world. Yes. I, all right. I love that scripture. Uh, I like how um, the passion uses the words, be well balanced. All right, be sober, be well balanced. Sobriety is what we all look like now, it, physically, all right? None of us we are drunken with wine, as the Bible says, and, you know, our one eye's not lower than the other one, and, you know, red, and you just stumbling everywhere and whatever else. So how many of y'all were alcoholics in your day? Some people, alcoholics. All right. Okay. So, I mean, it's di being an alcoholic would mean you just you indulge and you had the drunken the drunken devil on you. But if you if you just engage in a few drinks, that's something different. But if you're tipsy and out of it, you're not willy nilly, then it's a, diff it's a different story. So, alcoholic, then you would you remember what it felt like and how you were maybe by video footage of how you were drunk, <laughs> right? You know. <laughs> So look at y'all, just foolish. I'm glad I'm not there. I've seen some of y'all. Jesus. So, <laughs> so, but you saw how silly you looked, sounded, danced, all of it. Acted. <laughs> That's what it was. What you say, Miss Rise? I said acted. How silly you looked and acted. Uh huh. <laughs> So, you know? so in that, think about how that will look if you were doing that spiritually. <laughs> now think about how silly that looks. You know, you just, just, um, but you're intoxicated on the things of the world, and when you're when you're when you're stuck on that, you can't see when it's the enemy taunting you and, and getting you and all these things. So that's why the scriptures say, be sober, be diligent for the enemy. Is he roaming around? He yeah, wants yeah. you. So if you're, if you're too stuck on the wrong thing, you're not going to see the attack coming the other way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something my, I remember my, my granddaddy taught me when I, when he was teaching, when I was, uh, when I drove with him, <laughs> he said, rocket, you sit at the stoplight. Rocket. rocket. He always told me that. Rocket, you sit at the stoplight when it turns green. I don't care if they honk it behind you or not. You sit there because somebody is not paying attention. I don't care. You sit here. I said, yes, sir. And I always had to sit there at that stoplight with him, and it would make me so upset. Until some months ago, I realized that what he taught me, and I just felt like I was supposed to sit there for a minute. And I did. They went, beep, beep. And I, then I slowly pulled off, but before I did, a car came running through the red light, mm -hmm. and had I went quickly, I would have been smacked. Mm -hmm. But I had to be sober and vigilant to be able to see. I got to look to my left, mm -hmm. look to my right, like he taught me, and, and, then, then, and then ease look out and, and look again. And then look again. Mm -hmm. And so and then you slowly ease out because you may have missed something. Mm -hmm. So... But I was glad I was taught that. But that means I'm well-balanced. I'm sober. I'm vigilant because the enemy is always there. 
So mm -hmm. in that moment, I'm thankful for the protection of the Lord yes. by way of my grandfather and a lesson that he taught me many moons ago because I would have been toast, okay? So in that case, the devil roams around always seeking whom he may devour. The thing is, though, there, the devil does not have a favorite, but he will attack everybody, mm -hmm. okay? He does not have a favorite, but he will attack anybody, anyone that he wants to, mm -hmm. because he looks. But I feel like the enemy, as he roams around, he only looks for those who are not focused. The enemy will always try to win your day when you don't start off focused on the right thing. <laughs> so if you're not focused on the right thing, he will. He can have your entire day, okay? So if, I, if there is no prayer or no reading of the word, like to initiate the day or talking with Jesus, more than likely the enemy is going to have a footing in that day. And he does it very cunningly in multiple different ways. Okay? So take a decisive stand, which means you've got to be decided. The devil can do nothing with, it, with a decided one. If you are decided, all works well. However, if you're not decided, that's who he comes to attack. He loves undecided people, those who don't make decisions. Okay? those who are very slow to make decisions he loves y'all <laughs> because he wants his way in any avenue that he possibly can be so take a decisive stand against him which means you're not going back or not playing a uh, ring around rosy with uh with the enemy okay and resist his attack you resist by legit resisting okay not having conversation with we don't have conversation with the devil okay because every attack he has a strong um, and it's coming against all those things. All right. So I spent a lot of time on that, but I didn't mean to. All right. Um, Philippians chapter four, verse eight, Miss Roz. Okay. I'm going to read from the NLT because I like that book. All right. Um, and it says, let me make sure I'm on it. And now, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Yes. Amen. Think on those things. Meditate. You got a whole list of things that we're, it's good to meditate on. Meditate on those things. Someone say meditate. 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 All right. Number seven. <laughs> and we done. All right, we must simply, let me see if I can shorten this because this is, this is real long. Um, okay, so number seven, let's do this. Write down, trust God in every area. So trust God in every area. And then under that, right, refuse to be moved. And then under that, real big, just write, make the choice. Or just type in all caps, make the choice. So trust God in every area, refuse to be moved, make the choice, Okay. Now, and all of what I'm saying completely is we must simply make a dis decisive decision to trust God in every area of our lives and refuse to be moved and discouraged by our temporary circumstances in life. Okay, so and today's the best day to do that. So making um, making that choice to do that. Okay, so what does trust God in every area mean? With everything. Use your active voice, man. To me, <laughs> it just means to, well, to me, it means to give all of yourself yes. to him. Surrender all. Surrender all. Anybody else? My definition is trash, so <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Every area, okay. What is what does refuse to be moved mean? Not swayed. Not swayed. Not, not allow the enemy not to. Go ahead. To not to not allow the enemy to interfere or intercede in anything. 
Yes. Matt? Society, um, discipline, uh, that's what I got. <laughs> In toes down. In toes down. <laughs> <laughs> They got a trouble. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> that, is not, that is not you this time. There's a long uh, rod you can use for you. <laughs> yeah. You'll be in the middle of this. <laughs> I don't want to be beat. I got enough of that board. All right, anything else? Refuse to be moved? A yard stick. That's right. <laughs> um... Dion said, be steadfast. Very true. Um, yeah. And then what does um, making that choice mean? What was the original question right there? What does making that choice mean? So trust God in every area. Refuse to be moved. And then what does make that choice mean? So what does one look like that's fully trusting God in every area? Refusing to be moved and has made that choice and very decide, very decided. What does that mean? What does that person look like? They should live that life daily and and, and not. I, I feel like it's it's something that is is would be visible everywhere you go and, and you're living that life. That's what you're living. You're living a life that says I'm not worried about anything because I trust God and um and I'm not allowing anything to interfere with that trust that I have for Him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Very true. Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. What, that confuses me. So, what if you don't trust God with yourself, but you trust Him like based off what you do? Well. Like your talents or abilities and strengths, so you don't trust him with yourself. Like when he's when people say God, it shows in your actions, and I think, well, I just need to do well, and then that's the only thing I trust God with. Anything past that, no, only what what I do well with. Everything mm -hmm. else I try to handle myself. But what like, what does that look like? So trusting God in, in every area, um, and she said it, it comes to your actions, which it does. When your life is surrendered, unhindered, <laughs> not hindered is the right thing to say, but when it's not hindered, when it's fully surrendered to God, it's, it's by default, it's going to show in your everyday life. If I, for example, I genuinely love people. So out of me always comes this bubbly, hey, how are you? Because I genuinely love people. It's not something I strive for. It's just who I am. I'm just, I love people. So naturally, out of me comes love. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So when my, when my life is so submitted to Christ, out of that, my actions automatically line up. But the beautiful thing is, if I'm submitted in every area, even if I have a mistake, a letdown, uh, what we call failure, doing something wrong, even in that, my heart still knows the right thing to do because, again, my life is surrendered to him. So even if I mess up or have a bad day, oh, yeah. that doesn't change the right. fact that, like, I don't love God, I don't trust him enough or whatever else. It just means I'm a human and I had a moment. But nothing still, because nothing separates us from his love. So there's nothing there that I do that can even take me away from it. That makes sense? Yeah. So I don't have to, so striving or working towards something and being that being the 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 foundation to it is that slavery mentality thinking i gotta work to do good to get a, a badge or to get a you know a high five good job and that never was the case with jesus that makes sense that makes sense everybody yeah. mm -hmm. you look confused shara i wanted to hear him ask that question in a different way <laughs> ask the question again in a different way okay um so basically what i was saying i don't trust god past what i do i only I only feel like, I feel like trusting God is, I don't trust him with myself, basically. Anything personal, what I consider personal, like, in So personal, why? Because of experience, you don't trust people with yourself. You deal with it by yourself. 
So I don't want to get too deep, but if it has to deal with me, like I can go a person before, but if if it's too personal and it's about me, don't trust nobody with it because they'll just end up hurting you again. So just, but it's, it's not something I do. It's just natural for me to respond that way. So the only time I really engage with God is when I feel like I'm doing well. But with like personal stuff, I don't really talk about it. I don't think about it. Only time I think about it is when I'm by myself. So I don't like to. So I just deal with it. That's however, so I, it is trash. You know what? You know what that. <laughs> it really is. The line's coming out. <laughs> That part in the Medea play when Bam said, "This is sad." <laughs> 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 so, I, don't, I don't do it. It's, I'm not thinking that. I just have done that most of my life, so I don't know how to change it. It's, I don't know if I want to, honestly, but it's just comfortable for me, honestly, mm. and I feel like that's. Well, my re- do you want to respond to that, Sharu? I mean, I you know I'm kind of in the same boat, but a little further because I couldn't change it on my own. Mm-hmm. But I asked God to change it, and that's dangerous because He will. So when He mm-hmm. brings you to that place of healing, He'll bring all that mess up at the same time, and you won't have no choice but to trust Him. That's good. And this also, this is I, I think sometimes what we think is like when we when we are like that, we think it's just a way of life. That's how it is. When in reality, something taught you to become that way. You, my friend, need some deliverance, number one, and some inner healing. Because I mean, my lord. So anyone that comes and comes to that understanding of that, that's kind of that's the settlement to life, is because something had to happen to make you that way. Even if you didn't went through, went through anything, which we, I know personally you did go through things to, to paint that picture very horribly. But even if somebody, somebody didn't, it could be the way your mom taught you because she needs to be taken care of, needs to be handled. So that's what she taught because it's all she learned from a negative experience or a negative circumstance. Make sense? Mm-hmm. And that's all they know was to teach you that one way because that's all they've ever known. And so that's why I just think that, I just think that People need to be healed and hopefully start bringing kids into the world. Because if not, if not, you're gonna you're gonna ruin generations at a time. All right. So I just ooh, my lord. And so that just that burns my biscuits. All right. When people just realize, I'm having a baby, but you're just so broken. And when you are broken, you cannot adequately raise a kid in the way it's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> That's why we need the Resilience Academy, all right? Don't talk about it. Anyway, um, I guess to add to the, add to the conversation, um, Matt, you made me lost it. That's your I made me sh- okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of times, a lot of times, <laughs> um, we, we learn to adapt because of different things that we have gone through our lives un- intentionally or intentionally. It has the same concept of that nature versus nurture. There are things in us that we do so automatically. And there are things that we do that are all called learned behaviors. So listening to Jacoby, it is a learned behavior because that is something you had to adapt to to get through life. Um, and then also, which is, it goes back into a control thing, where you trust them with your skills, and you trust them with what you're good at. But the thing that you're not good at, uh, you don't, or you know, things that you are not good at, or things that you, try, you don't really take in because it's something that's out of your hands. So you equate God in yourself. So in a way, unintentionally, you have to look yourself as your own God. Mm-hmm. It's just like, if I can't fix it, if I can't do it, then it absolutely cannot be done. Right. 
and then some goes to a whole nother level of healing and deliverance. But that 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 is how you learn how to survive. Mm-hmm. That is how you learn how to function. Because if you did not do it, it was not going to be done. And just like growing up, it's a silly example, but when there was no food on the table or my parents decided to go out and eat, I knew that if I didn't go in there and pick me a piece of chicken or something, I had to do it because if I wasn't, I, I was not I was not going to eat. And like I said, such a silly example, but that goes with how we look at ourselves, how we deal with how we deal with ourselves, how we handle stress, how we handle um, hard situations, we we learn negative ways to deal with it. So when it, and when it comes to doing the things of the kingdom and the things of God, um, there are some things that we cannot do because of that standard, and because and because of that, it's just like we're well, lost out in space. We don't know we don't know what to do. Well, I can't do this anymore because it's against the word of God. Well, I can't do this no more because um, I'm a Christian. It's just like so we have to relearn. And retrain ourselves on learning how to deal with bad situations. Yes, so praise God. Right now. Anybody else? <laughs> makes sense? Yes, it makes sense. Right. Right. A lot of sense. <laughs> the great thing is you have time to handle. Yes. Amen. All right. So trusting God, refusing to be moved, making that choice, all three of those working together is a very great thing. It's my point for making make, saying all that. Okay. So we need to continually re, uh, commit to remaining to what God has called us to do in our lives. Okay. Everybody know what they call to do in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Somewhere getting there, almost there, yes, working on it. Okay. So <laughs> as you do that, God will continue to meet every area. Um, who has a red? Everybody, everybody, everybody's red here, right? Yes, everybody, everybody's red. Um, Matt, grab Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Um, and then Jacoby, grab Philippians 1, 6. So Philippians 4.19, Jacoby grabbed Philippians 1.6. Um, Kiera grabbed Psalm 37.5. And then Sharo grabbed Psalm 37.23-24. So Philippians 1.6, Psalm 37.5. Huh? You're 4.19. Philippians 1 6, Philippians 4 19, Psalm 37 5, and then Psalm 37 23 through 24. Okay? Um, and just put your thumb right there and hold it. <clears throat> so, but I want Philippians 4 19 now, though. Okay. I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant <coughs> riches of glory revealed in me through the anointing one Jesus Christ. Yes, read it one more time. I'm convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. For I have seen the abundant abundant riches of glory revealed in me to me through the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's the passion? Yeah. Alright. That's actually one verse I don't like how it reads. Um, surprisingly, uh, I'm going to read it from the NLT. And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs, need, from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So, in that, when you flow in just that, all right, the same God who takes care of, to takes care of me will supply all my needs. But the way that God supply is when you're in line, in the will, Okay. You'll never be without. The moment you step out of the will of God, that's when you got some concern going on. Then you gotta then you gotta become 
uh, like I say, I said, your own God to make things happen. However, just allowing him to be takes care of everything else, okay? So we must simply always refuse to allow the cares and distractions of this world to stop us from wholeheartedly pursuing what God has planned for our lives. It is easy to get off track when you feel like nothing is working for you. Okay? It is easy. That's the sad part. It should not be easy, but it is easy, especially when you feel like nothing's working well. Okay? So you feel like, you know, you got to make some things happen. You got to, you got to, so it's, you just become distracted and you get off. And then we find ourselves, because we feel like that we're not getting what we need, we'll go out to get what we need ourselves. When in reality, we've, we stepped out of the resource of heaven and come into the resource of ourselves, which is in a worse predicament than anything else. But we'll say, oh, we're doing good. No, nah, you're just struggling really hard. All right, and you think, well, I got something over here. I wouldn't get nothing over here. You got protected, sustained life over here. That's more than enough immediately. But when you feel like you're not getting what you want, it's easy to put yourself in the place of God, okay? And that's a very dangerous place. So God has so much for us in store. Um, he has so much in store for each and every believer. That's, that's, a, that's a guarantee. He has enough for us. It's always there. If we continually trust the Lord, and allow him to guide our steps in life, we can be assured that all that God has planned for our lives will come to pass. Stick with him, you'll always be taken care of. Stick with yourself and you will find yourself messed up. Okay? <laughs> That's just what it is. There's no other way around it. All right, let's read Psalm, oh, I'm sorry, Philippians 1 6. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began his good work. The one who begun this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to you, to it until the unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like the way that one reads. Like that. So maturing of you. And maturing is not a beautiful process. Okay? I will say it this way. It is easier to mature a moment versus allowing God to mature you. Here's what I mean by that. Moment meaning something that you want to do that you know you should not be doing. It is easy to mature a moment because your mind is creative and you will think that way and mature that moment so good to the point where you just like, I got to do it now versus allowing God to mature you, which is beating the ever living brakes off of you to get everything out of you. And you, we don't like that type of pain. But well, we will we will just suffer under shame and condemnation of the of the of the consequence of doing something we were not supposed to be doing and 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 just whatever else versus legit y'all just taking the beautiful moment to understand that moments don't have to be matured but we do okay we do and trusting him with everything means, Lord, I'm trusting you with even the brokenness of my heart, the brokenness of my life. I saw a post today on Facebook, and I was going to read it, and I was like, man, this sure is a long post. So I read a little bit of it. But it was talking about how um, she posted a picture of herself, and she's like, you know, she's like, Lord, um, basically the, the post was like a conversation between her and God, but it's, it was a someone, something created, and somebody just copy and paste and post your picture kind of thing. So it's a chain chain post. Um, <laughs> And basically, God was like, I don't want your broken pieces. And he was like, why? Because I have everything brand new for you over here. Just trust me kind of thing is what basically he was saying. We want to we we're, we want to give him the brokenness when in reality, he doesn't really care about it. Why? Not because he doesn't want you to be great, but he, there's just something more for you. There's something more beautiful that he has for you that, that's available for us. Well, we just got to take the moment to express like, hey, okay, cool. I want to trust you with just an empty canvas, and I'm going to allow you to be you. You will find yourself always getting cut with broken pieces. Mm. And picking on still saying, Lord, I trust you. Ouch. Lord, I believe you. Ouch. When God has a whole new life for you that oftentimes we just refuse to take because we trust the brokenness more than the Savior. Mm. And in this whole point for us going through this, is to see that if you trust the brokenness, you will always have a fragmented view on him and you. But when you trust him in the fullness of who he is, you will see that he has everything already aligned in a beautiful way that you don't have to work for. All you have to do is receive it. And that's the beauty of trusting him completely. 
So my life and everything that has happened in my life has brought me this, to this conclusion that I can trust him because I have proof and history that shows that he has always been God and he's always been trustworthy. And the only time that I've considered him, I, I could not trust him is when I made myself my own God and trusted in myself more than him. <laughs> And from that moment, I thought, well, God's not trustworthy. I can't trust him. I got lying. No, I just trusted in the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I think. And it's possible to trust in the wrong thing when you're focusing on the brokenness. Because when you break something, some pieces are bigger than the other. And so when you look in that bigger piece, you see more of. So it's like, okay, cool. Life is okay. Nah, you just got to, you just picked a big piece that day. Because <laughs> sometimes those, those small pieces only show you so much. But the bigger pieces, you actually see more. But and when everything is complete, it all makes sense. I used that analogy a while ago about the puzzle, them, them thousand piece puzzles that some of y'all like. I don't know how. And but if I if I that whole if that whole puzzle covered this whole table right here, it would seem perfectly fine. I only have one piece left. I'll be good. But if I if I dumped all that stuff out the box. <laughs> I'll be frustrated and walk away really quickly. And I'll come back with this comment when you get done with it. All right? But seeing all them pieces in that pile bothers me. Jeez. Because it's just like, it's just, I'm like, oh, it's, I'm, th I'm thinking it's a mess. It's a pile. It's messy. I'll, I want to stack them all in nice pieces, you know, which is stupid. But my point is, if I see all of that, I don't want to deal with it because I just see so much or I don't see the potential. Or you think, man, which piece did I start with first? Or you find that corner piece out of searching for a while to fit there and then you start building on top of there, whatever, however you want to do it. But it can be frustrating with piece by piece by piece when God's like, I already have a masterpiece complete. Just accept that. You're trying to bring me brokenness when I'm trying to bring you something that's already healed. You're trying to piece together your healing when I've already died so you could be healed. You know what I'm saying? Like you're trying to find the pennies to make a dollar. When I already have cars and houses and land already for you. But when we trust the small things and don't trust the big thing, we miss out. All right? Psalm 37 5. Whoever had that one. Oh. <laughs> Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. What's the, we say the last part again? And he will do this. Again? And he will. And read the whole thing again. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Commit your way to the Lord means I am okay with giving you what I originally wanted to do. <laughs> and I'm going to commit this to you saying, all right, you can burn it up. I'm going to trust you with my way. Commit your way. All right. One of the things we, I, I say at Fumes is we now commit this body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Meaning I am giving up of what no longer is and so fully surrendering that unto you. Commit your way. So when that word says, that word says commit, that means in the same conscience of a funeral. My way is toast. I don't got it no more. But now your way is what I need. Okay, make sense? Um, Psalm 37. Uh -huh. And he takes pleasure in all his ways. Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed because the Lord holds his hand. It's just it's just the I think what I really want to hunt in just for a second on is it's though he falls, he won't be overwhelmed. Which I want that to give you some relief. You're going to have a you're going to have moments and that's okay. Okay? But when you fall with him, you won't be overwhelmed. When you fall with you, you'll want to stay there. Make sense? Yes. So fall with him, meaning that when we fall, he's right there. We think he just, he runs and sits at a buffet and waits for us to get our lives together. When in reality, he's right there with you. All right? The, the mighty hand of God is just right there, just waiting to pick you up and help you up from where you are. And he's always been there and he's not changing. Okay, Charlotte, read that again for me. Sorry. What's that Psalm 37, 23 through 24. A man's steps are established by the Lord, 
He takes pleasure in his way. Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed because the Lord holds his hand. Right there. Just trust it. I, I feel like that sometimes the Lord allows falls until we realize that he's, until we fully understand that he's, he hasn't gone anywhere. Just me. I, I feel like that he allows them to happen just so we can see that he's, he's always right there and that he hasn't left and that he hasn't changed his mind and he's always holding our hand, which means that you, you have an option to pull on his string or to pull on yours. And he's, last time I checked, he's a lot stronger than a lot of us. <laughs> Always. So commit those ways to the Lord. And then when you do commit those ways, the scripture said that he, we find pleasure in his way. And if you find that, man, you're really set. So commit your way to the Lord. Whatever your way is, and um, I'm done. But I, I want us to, to, to look into that. Ask yourself, like, is everything, if I, is there anything that I'm doing that is my way? And if it is my way, will you make the choice today to give him full permission to take it, ruin it, and give me something better? And that takes a lot, that's some, for some of you all, that takes a lot of thought. For some of us, it's, it's easy. But for some of us, that's a very difficult choice. Because we want to be in control. We need to have the final say. We need to know the outcome of this. And if we think that we have a foot in it, then it's going to be all right. But in reality, our foot in is making a huge mess. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Thoughts, comments, questions. Or in this case, concerns. <laughs> I think it was a it was a great night of assessing ourselves because mm -hmm. um, a lot of us don't like to think about ourselves, don't like to like do inner um, look inwardly, um, mm -hmm. but it forced us to in order to move forward mm -hmm. and to really be obedient and give all of us this time, not just like the little part that we want to give and hold on, but like give all of us. So I think it was it was a great night just to re assess and. Um, Repent, turn away, and move forward. And not like dwell on it too too much, just move forward and in this so we can see us walk, walking in our future and what we can be, who we can become. So yeah. I think it was great. Yeah. Personally. <coughs> Personally for me it was um, like Matt said, it was looking inward. Controlling me, mm -hmm. got to be in control, and um, I think that I think for me I, that was hard to to say, okay, God, I'm gonna give this to you, and I'm not gonna take it back this time, you know, and and mean it. Yeah. So, thank you for this trust. Anybody else? I think it was a good a means to evaluate, to examine ourselves and to help us better understand where we are and where we want to go, where we want to be, what we want God to do for us to help us to, to get to that next step um, and, 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 and to be able to do it um, sincerely because we, 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 we say it, but we've got to learn to do it and stay with it. That commitment is very important. So um, it, it's helping me to examine myself more. And, and I need that right now, I need that, so. And it's keeping obedience too.
why I enjoy rebellion so much <laughs> to be honest because uh, <laughs> rebellion keeps me in control pride helps me to uh, um, not acknowledge how I feel and get too emotional I don't like feeling emotional um, so and it makes me feel safe even if I know the outcome is bad just me knowing what the outcome is is enough for me then mm -hmm. I will go through it again and repeat cycles, but it's not my choice because it's all I really know and it's what feels safe to me. So it really helped me, open, gave me the opportunity to be open to something new and different, which is good. Mm -hmm. And it's. I don't want you to feel, I don't want you to feel like you're alone either um, because like in this room even, you're not the only one that deals with control a certain thing so mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel like this is so much on you that all eyes are on you like we're we're a family we're a community and we're going to grow and we're going to grow and we're going to become together so you're not in this together you're not like, in this by yourself um, yeah even like the safe place like that's somewhere that I was in not too long ago so I don't want you to feel like you're alone. Yeah. Y'all don't have to pity to me though. Y'all don't have to be bad for me. I'm just, I I'm just duck it out. No, we're just, we're a community. <laughs> we do this go. together. That's what community is. Okay. Okay. I think a lot of times people think that community is always good, and it is. But it's always community is always good. It doesn't mean the status of community is always good. That makes sense. Meaning that. All of us have could be going through the same exact thing, but we all going through the same exact thing together. <laughs> and that's the beauty of community. Like the legit, there's always somebody that may be going through something <laughs> similar or has recently come out of something similar or has overcome it completely. We all <laughs> got a way to testify and say the same thing. All right. <laughs> and I, think that's, I think that's beautiful. That's one of the beautiful things about true, honest community. We don't mm -hmm. fake the funk. All right. The thing that I love about Revive is it's the no judgment zone. Yeah. I mean, I really love that. And, you, and it's in all, all of us. I think it's just in all of us. We're not judging each other. It's mm -hmm. just lay, all laid out there. It is what it is. Period. Because we all learning and growing together. Mm -hmm. And we all understand that we all have broken areas and we're trying to all fix those areas and we're trying to do it together as a community. You know, because you went through this doesn't mean I haven't been through it. I may be able to help you through that, but then at the same time, I may be going through something different and somebody else may be able to help me through that. And sometimes it's just knowing that we all in it, in it together helps us do it. Yeah. yeah. And the other part is just because something is going on, it doesn't mean you're in a bad place. And I, I think it's very important to mention. Just because like this has uh, caused us to assess everything doesn't mean it's bad. Assessment really is a good thing. As much as we don't, we may not like what we see, but it really is good, okay? Um, and I always say this. I think it's beautiful to have this. And this, this is something I'm, I, I pray and I'm thankful for every single day. And when I, when I was recording the videos for Partner Track, I was um, kind of praising it in that as well. I'm just thankful that Revive is a place where we, we are seeking, I won't, I won't say striving, but seeking to do well by the Father. And we seek to do that together. And that even if something is going on, because I, I said, I told us, Lord, I don't want the church that looks good, but in reality, which is trash on the inside. And there are several churches like that. And I, I told us, I never want our church to be that way. And he has honored that so far. And I'm so thankful that we can sit around the table and say, okay, let's get us together. And on Sundays, we still have phenomenal encounters. But it's still, but it's still the grace of God saying, "I'm, I'm with you, walking with you while you're working on this at the same time." I just think that's beautiful, and that's how it should be. 
that we're always working. That way that we can be a whole church, a healed church together. All right. And I just think that's beautiful, honestly. And I'm thankful for you all that's willing to commit to this process of just going through it until we get to the other side. I'll tell you all, it does not feel comfortable all the time. Okay, I get it. I understand. I go through process. You go through process. We're all going through a process. But in that, the thing is, there is an expected end to this. And eventually it's going to turn all around for us. And we're going to see the glory of God after this is all over. Amen. Yes. So Amen. it's eventually, it's going to get there. So I don't want us to think, that's really me on the inside. <laughs> I don't want us to think and get caught up in the fact that like, Lord, I'm just so tired of going through this. And I think that if we if we say that, we've got to repent because that process is pruning something out of us. It's developing mm -hmm. something out of us and it's it's growing mm -hmm. some growing us into something. So mm -hmm. if you have said, I'm tired of this, I'm annoyed by it, this is aggravating. You need to repent because yeah. the Bible says that brethren counted all joy when you fall into these things, because this is perfecting something in you. It's establishing something in you and it's strengthening something in you. You may not be able to see those three things as doing because you're so focused on the other things. But again, that's why you got to focus on the right thing. If you're not focused on the right thing, you will get frustrated <clears throat> at, the, at the wrong thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So focus in on the right thing. And the focus, the focus in it part is that God is able to sustain me while I'm in it. And he's going to bring me out of this in due time. And just and be okay with that. Until you get to the end. But until you get to the end, remain in expectation, okay? And so we're all in that together. And so we end this with Jacoby, we're in this with all, but not just him, everybody, because we're all going through something Amen. that we're eventually going to see the outcome in it, okay? And I think that's what makes our encounters on Sunday and throughout the week and us as a community better because we're in that same place. I'm, we, at least I'm not, into, I'm not the only one in the church going through it because <laughs> somebody else is too. And we may not have similar processes, but we do have the same end, which is we made it. <laughs> All right? So it's eventually going to get there. It just it does take time. And I'm a witness to that. Learn how to worship well while you wait. And in the meantime, <laughs> bring your frustration, your worry, out, bring it all to the worship area and just lay it there. And just worship on top of it until you get some hope and go back to it. And when you feel like you're losing hope, worship again <laughs> until, you, until you find the hope again. And eventually you'll find yourself worshiping constantly and worship becomes a lifestyle to the point where the hope is no hope is not extinct. Hope is always there because you've learned how to put your trust in the ones who can carry you over. Okay? So we're all in this together, my point. Thank you. All right. Anything else? I think you need to go back there and ask to know what we're supposed to be doing. It's like question marks in the spirit of yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Do we all know what we're supposed to be doing? <laughs> no. All right. Yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. And when when I ask when I ask that question, um, does like to say what you're supposed to be doing, meaning that what kind of twofold? What in your life is supposed to be, what what are you supposed to be doing in life right now? And then what are you supposed to be doing in the kingdom, church, serving in any way, capacity? Those are the things we talk like those gift assessments. Those are something we we mentioned about that um, that helps you discover what you're called to do what your life is kind of shaped into. Um, when you're finding that purpose, typically I like to say it, and I talk about it in part of track, um, is uh, typically the thing that costs you the most pain is the thing you're called to. What bothers you the most is typically what you're called to. What annoys you the most, typically what you're called to. What aggravates you, typically what you're called to, okay? One of my passions, because it pains me, is to see people um, uh, treated badly hate it. God says start a church. What the heck? You know? So, and then make sure that that is not the, not the goal of us. Okay? So, here we are. All right? But that's not, the prim that's not the premise of revival, but that's what he made me into. I can't stand seeing people treated badly. All right? Now more so what it's morphing into is this, is this political thing, and I've never been interested in politics, but the, the, the urge to to have some political office is burning me in my back and i'm not trying my hardest same step to run away from it i'm gonna be honest with y'all okay all right I am, no not for me maybe city council or something like that you know you want to be the dc 
Bye. That's why. I, <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay. So, so does everybody know what they? I think maybe we need to have uh, some conversation about purpose, maybe on Thursdays, to kind of talk through what we're called to do, and why purpose is so important, and what happens when you don't operate in purpose. I think I'm sharing smiles, so I'm going to say yes. That's the move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, does everybody know? I agree. I agree. We need it. What do you say? Is purpose the same thing as your gifts? Or are they two different things? They are the same, but they are also different. That's how I like to answer it. Um, because purpose may be something that you're called to do in life, but that gift, I feel like, it's the fuel to the purpose, and also it fuels the kingdom as well. That's the. I probably lost you with that. Let me try to explain it again. Um, my purpose in life um, is can be now. My purpose in life is to be what I'm in, what I'm doing right now, which is to be here for people, to pastor a church, and um, to do all these things. But my also my purpose also is to be in a secular arena, which is teaching school. Um, what I do at Berea, um, things of that nature. I also have a purpose of being a photographer. That's something that God has purposed me to do. It's it's something that I've come into contact. I never desired to be that. God laid it on my heart to do it, so I did it. My gift is something that you're given from birth, um, but those gifts and your purpose are given from birth, but that gift piece, because gifts can be anything, but the gifts according to the God, of God is um, the gifts of helps, administration, um, working of miracles, uh, things of that nature, they're all listed in scripture, but those are all gifts, but your purpose, again, it can be anything, but that purpose can be for something spiritual, I and mean, everything is spiritual, but something for spiritual, and then also for something for the secular arena as well. So my purpose may be to be a school teacher. That's your purpose. But that's something God has ordained you to do because the oil flows on that. So you can be in marketplace or you can be in church and operate in purpose. There are some people who are never purposed. To, they, they are purposed to go to church, but they're not purposed to work in church. They are called to take their anointing into the marketplace and be in, in, in the fields and media and stuff like that. So, like, for example, Matt is called to uh, media, the, the mountain of media. So he'll take his God-influenced purpose and go into the world and change the game for the media world. So now we have all these nasty, horrible things on TV. So one day we'll see match programs and plays on TV, and it'll be perfectly fine. It'll be good, wholesome, Christian or non-Christian, but a good, wholesome entertainment that's not derogatory. You know what I'm saying? But that's his purpose, so he's going to do well in it. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right? Anybody else? So... Knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Kiara? You know what you're supposed to be doing? Come on. Which is? So yeah, so what's the whole, now the question is, have you ever dealt with insecurity? Yes. Okay, so you see how, but in your life people have like talked about your appearance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you see how like the shame and pain that people have caused you, mm -hmm. and now you're opening a boutique, which is you are helping, because having the right outfit does something to you. Yeah. <laughs> so you see how your, see, so see how your pain connects to purpose? Let's go. <laughs> So it's, that's, that's how pain connects to purpose. It, it will pain you at first. And same, And the, my best explanation of it is when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Yeah. Nevertheless, <laughs> not my will, but thine yeah. be done. Okay? Now that nevertheless is where pain meets purpose. And that purpose is always on the other side of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... If I am learning, if I can, so your, oh Lord, I don't want to do this because I'm not sure if I'm going to make sales, whatever else. That's your, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. You pressing the go button on all this boutique stuff is the, nevertheless, 
not my will but thine be done and then you become a fancy millionaire and whatever else and then you have the ability to have so many things in stock to the point where you can go into troubled areas and marginalized areas and fund maybe little girls who don't have any clothes to start with the school year mm-hmm. now you can just give all of these eloquent pieces to them and they don't have to go to school being afraid of being made fun of you changed the game mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. ripped the head off the enemy from all of these young girls being bullied, all this stuff, and now they have this confidence that changes everything. All because you were made fun of when you were little. Yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. That's how pain connects to purpose. All right. Do you have the name of your YouTube? Yes, it's Beautiful Jane Pink. Beautiful, what? Beautifully K Boutique. Beautifully K Boutique. Beautifully K Boutique. I love it. I support you. I'll support you. I'll let people know about it. Wait, you got stuff for men? No, not yet. <sighs> <laughs> well, I don't let people know. You gender, gender bias. Gender. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> well, you let people know. Buy me a gift card. Oh, yeah. That's yes, cool. there you go. You buy Kaylee a gift card. Let's pay for iPhone. No. You got selfish. Go get yourself some ice cream. It's fine. No. All right. Miss Roz, we're sorry. Okay. I'm all right. All right. Anybody else? Kaylee? You working on it? You have the question mark? <laughs> Jesus. I'm the lost sheep. <laughs> Miss Roz, you just talked to me last week. About what you want to move into. Okay. I know. Yeah. So you, you, we, we, we good. You good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know, but I just, I don't know. Okay. Okay. okay we're gonna celebrate Miss Ross. Miss Ross came to me last week and talked about the women's ministry and how she's been feeling yes. a burden for that, and she really wants to get that moving. Yeah. 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 I've been working on ideas too. And she's been working. Even today. So so, so, she, so eventually, after we talk and, and get this in process, she'll be stepping out of the children's ministry and be moving into that. And that's what she wants to do. Okay? So that is the beauty. <laughs> it's the process. Remember, we got a process we got to get to. We got a process. We're going to get there. But that's the, be- that's the beautiful thing. <laughs> right. We're coming into purpose. But... Now, mind you, now she, the, you, you retired for, you used to work, you worked with kids forever. So that was a, a, a push into that. She had a burden, a pain for that, for some, and that she, but she devoted years of her life to that. And so, and you still sub too, sometimes, don't you? And so she still has that, that's there. So it's always a part of her life. Okay. And so, but seeing women in the way that they are and seeing them fully matured and grown and unifying women is something she has a passion for. Because I'm sure there's something in her life that pulls her into that. That makes sense? Yeah. So we celebrate that. That's a good thing. All right. I love it. All right. Who else? Oh, Kaylee. My bad. So have you, but you, so we got to figure out what pains you, you're trying to find a pillow to hide. Yeah. So we got to figure out what pains you to the point of pushing you into that purpose, which there are several things that pains you. Um, we gotta, <laughs> so we, we have to, we have to narrow in to see maybe which one is for now and then what others evolve in or how they can all be in something together to create something into something right. So for Kaylee, is you have racial things bother you when people are mistreated bother you, homeless bothers you, not in a bad way, but like you really want to be a strong help for them. So we have several different things. All of them seem to deal with people. I love people. <laughs> she loves people, wow. and you, and you, you love especially older people. <laughs> so there, there are several things we have there that can be talked through. So we got to figure out what there. Okay, so can somebody chime in? What do you what, what do you see, or what could you possibly see Kaylee doing that involves people? I have a question before you step. Mm-hmm. So I, every time I take my gifts test or whatever, 
Like, I thought I knew what I would do, but, like, and every time I take my gifts test, I get the same answers every time, but I'm like, I don't think I can be all the, the ones when I'm proficient. And <laughs> so I don't really, I think that's where I get confused because I'm like, there are so many answers here, and that I'm like, it's like the puzzle pieces for you. That's me, and I'm like, um, let's just put all these in the bag and just see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I think I just get confused and hung up. I am very analytical too. I'm like, you are. well, there are so many of these things and I don't know which one of them is true. And there's a 97% here and a 97% here, but there's a 98, so maybe it's that one. And then I'm like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay, so here's my suggestion. Okay, so my suggestion is next week we officially start this conversation about purpose, okay? And everybody's homework is to go home and to think about and write a list, bring it next week, of everything that pains you. We got time. I beat through deliverance on Sundays. Maybe the list will be shorter. Maybe so. (laughs) (laughs) But not, but pains you meaning like what moves, pain means what moves your heart. Okay, that's what I mean by pain. Pain, what moves your heart. So when you see it, it bothers you. When you see it, you have strong compassion for it. Or when somebody comes around dealing with that, just something about it, just, it just, it just, it just, it just does something to you. Okay. What gets to you? What get? What what? What gets to you? What gets to you? Yes. So make make sure it's not an annoyance though. We don't want to just write down bring your annoyances. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so write down what pains you. Okay, so for me, that again, that that part was people. Okay, um, I hate seeing music done incorrectly. Oh, it drives me up a wall. So I'm called to that. That's my that's one of my mountains. Is music. So I love music and seeing it done correctly and sung correctly is a very important thing to me. Okay, things of that nature. Okay, um, uh, I hate to see church done. Man, I just so. That's where my apostleship comes from, to plant churches so we can have healthy models of churches. Jesus, okay? So, Revive Church all over the globe is our, is our, is our mission, our, our motive, okay? So, of good, healthy, thriving churches, okay? Um, counseling, when people are, are not, in, not whole and healed, it bothers me. So, um, still talking about that next degree with the Lord, okay? So, things of that nature, that just, just it bothers me. Okay, so one day, Doctor Doctor David Simmons. One day, okay, huh? And the cocks goes up. All right. Okay, so next week we start this comment. So I think this is good. I, I one thing I love about open house is that open house, the Lord gives a gives an agenda for maybe a few weeks or something, and then we somehow find our next in conversation. I think that's really good because. It's not. I'm not just teaching something that yes, you can benefit from, but it's where you are, and I think this purpose thing is very important. So, I think it's really, really good. So, thank you, Shara, for going back to that question. All right. Anything else? I think it was good. I think it's good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I don't want to end, but I'm about to. I know, right? <laughs> Next week. Okay. Um, I have a prophetic something to say, and then um, uh, um, I'll. Um, we'll, we'll, I mean, it's not Please. nothing like oh. that per se. All right. So I was at Walmart yesterday. Y'all trust me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all didn't check your head and say yes. nothing. Y'all trust me? Yes. I, I passed. Thank you, Miss Ross. So I was at Walmart yesterday, and I was at, in a grocery side, and the Lord screamed and said, Listerine. And, um, but I was, I was in, um, and so I went back, and I felt led to grab the gold kind, okay? So I was like, so I was like, the Lord said to tell, share with you all, and I was like, what am, why am I sharing this? And so on the way over here, I looked up. Um, what the gold is the is really good for. And so, of course, the gold kind is the most nastiest kind. Jesus, the Lord is Christ. And, but it is the original formula. When I mm-hmm. it, up, it's, it dates back to the original kind. However, there is recent lab-based reports that Listerine mouthwashes have activity against enveloped viruses, including coronavirus. 
So what I feel like that is going to come up next is something with the mouth, with Corona. And it's going to be a very peculiar case, but someone's going to out that this Listerine has something in it that's going to be um, helpful to rinse and guard from germs and stuff like that, and it's going to run out, and we all going to be out. So I bought three big, huge bottles yesterday. Don't be cheap and get the generic kind, though. Amen. Get the real kind, okay? <laughs> now, I, I did, I, so I did compare, I did compare the uh, generic kind to the real kind, and the, re the real kind has everything in it, but the generic kind leaves out some of those things. And I haven't mm -hmm. researched specifically every, each one to see which is the one, but more than likely the one they left out is the one we probably don't need, okay? Mm -hmm. So just as you go to the store, grab a couple of bottles every time you go, okay? I don't know what's coming down the pipeline. I just I think it's just something gonna come out. So the gold listerine, okay? I've had the Insta Perfect. Mm -hmm. I had the sweet listerine product. But that one? Uh, I don't know if I picked oh. up that one this week. But oh, I think I've seen the gold mini it, I, I just I used to hate, and the reason why I hate it because Debbie always used to use it. Debbie Jackson, Big Deb. She always used to use that stuff, and she just switched it around her mouth. I'm like, how can you get that stuff in your mouth past two seconds? This stuff is nasty. So start using Listerine, okay? All right, so whatever it is, the Lord is saying, is he's saying something. <clears throat> Listen, I've never been screamed at Listerine in my life in the goat kind, all right? And I use uh, the crest kind, the Listerine. Listerine kind. Huh? Listerine kind. Yep. So the gold Listerine, okay? The, the gold Listerine, okay? All right, any questions on that? Just... Trust, trust me at what I know. All right, I'll just know what the Lord says. The gold listerine, just get some, okay? If you can't find it, then send out an SOS to all of us, and if we at the store, we gonna pick some up for you, okay? Um, I bought again three green bottles, okay? Gold, gold. Um, of the gold, gold. Excuse me. And the funny thing is, like um, Johnson and Johnson is the footing of listerine. So, but um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has proven to be really trash. Mm -hmm. However, like, but the Lord at the beginning when he, when Johnson & Johnson said they were going to start making stuff, the Lord said to watch Johnson & Johnson. And so I think it's not the vaccine because clearly that stuff is trash. But the, this Listerine though is made by, so I think Johnson & Johnson, I think that's why the Lord said to watch Johnson & Johnson because that may be, maybe they're good footing back in the door because they're out right now. But so yeah, so um, Listerine, the gold kind, the gold kind, the gold kind. Just get it, all right? Walmart up the street from my house. You can get it legit anywhere if it's there. But I think something's going on because it's 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 being just disappearing from shelves everywhere. So um, I don't know. I think it's like five bucks, five something. And I'm gonna ask somebody if you get me some because I'm having car trouble. My my transmission is going. Um, I just when I hit the light on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. he said it could go at any time. He said it might last two or three years and it might just go out any time. So, um, so I, I, I got to start looking for a car. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm in the midst of doing that, but I, you know, I don't have the inkling of how to get started, but I'm going to get one. Um, I'm, I'm trusting and I'm just trying to be still and let the Lord lead me. Um, so, um, so if y'all out and about and you got, you bring me some Sunday, I'll, I'll bring you some money. Um, bring okay, bring about two or three bottles. I'm like David, if the big bottles, um, <laughs> I'll have like have it, have it already here. And, and Miss Sharon, I, I I need me and you to have a conversation if you would call me on your way home about Sunday. Mm -hmm. I need a ride. <laughs> she, she give, she's giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> Yes. All right. Um, any other final things? So get some Listerine, okay? If, and mm -hmm. even if it's not for now, it'll eventually be useful, okay? So mm -hmm. just trust me on this one, okay? Use it for something. <laughs> um, anything else? Are, are hearts and minds clear? Chris, you mentioned the sign-up sheet for the Walt City thing. Sunday. Uh, not Sunday, excuse me. So Walt City, we have... Um, the list for all the items that we need is on the app on the first page. When you open up, it's right there. Um, I'm going to have a little uh, a tub that we'll bring on Sunday to put all those items in. So bring them as you can, please. I'm gonna, uh, hmm? I'm sorry. Goodbye. The last Sunday of this uh, month, August the 29th. 20th. 
Hey, did you get my list that I, that note that I sent you about yes. going into there just to see if it's anything they can do? I don't know. Okay. 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 So just if you can buy those things, um, and then um, the second Saturday, is that what it is? The second Saturday of September, I believe, or third, 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 the September eighteenth. Eighteen out and uh, walking around. Uh, walking around the city, so um, we need all hands on deck for that. And if you can't walk um, around and stuff like that, we have some other alternatives that we can work out to help get ready. Like for example, like packing the bags, like putting those little baggies together to give the homeless stuff like that. We can kind of entrust yeah, that to, that to other people. Huh? Yeah, the date is soon to be announced. Isaiah's working on that for us. All right. So the last right. Sunday to get all the stuff in the twenty ninth. Packing day, yes. Okay. Do we have any idea of how many we're trying to pack for? You see, 30, 30, 30 to 35 bags. Okay. I have enough for 30 to 35 bags. So, uh, okay. Is that whole list in a bag for 35 people? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Everything yes. Something, something, something along those lines. Yeah. Okay. The little tiny ones, yeah. You hear that wrong? Yeah. When you say tiny, you like one subject. No, like the, the little, little, little tiny ones. The, the blues, room. blues clues, no, the little tiny so joints. So basically, travel size. Oh, I bought the big, I bought the big one subject notebooks. <laughs> I mean, get the big ones, we'll use the big ones, right. but I prefer I don't want to go home. the smaller ones will be. Just so but y'all want the smaller ones? Yeah. I saw somewhere where they had a little pack of the small ones, like three yeah, in a pack. A pack of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what is this for? Tell me what you The homeless, to hand out to homeless. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. or even smaller. Oh. Yep. Let me say it. Oh. Yeah. But if you already bought something that's bigger, we'll take it. Like this. Well, I already bought something bigger, but I can I'll see what I can find on the small yeah, left. They have this okay, listen, they have a little three packs like that for at the Dollar Tree. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that's just for it to hand out to those um those around. And if we don't have complete bags, it's okay. We'll just use what we have and, and make them work and, and so what about like the deodorant? The, do are we getting the little pack it's, the little getting, things, getting, the deodorant? Small okay. Of everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we have more than thirty to thirty-five, are we going to use them for that day or save them for a later date? We we'll use them for the day, okay. and if so, we just give out two bags to one person. They can. I'm sure they can use it for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. So is it a targeted group of thirty-five people that you? Doing We're still working on that. However, like there are, Kaylee kind of has some knowledge of uh, targeted areas that typically homeless people are. So we'll intentionally go to those areas and okay. say, this is for you from us kind of thing. Okay. So, so um, if the, the ones that I bought, the, the bigger ones, cause I bought some ink pens and stuff too, you can separate, but the big ones, if you need it for classes or anything that you're having, just use them for that. Okay. They didn't cost but a quarter. Well, make it work. You know, so, I mean, I don't care. I just, you know, I thought we might get in those, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we good? Is everybody clear on that? All right, cool. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for tonight's study about mm -hmm. trust. And I bless you, Father, um, just for, to have a group of individuals who are willing to come together to assess their lives and I just thank you, Father, and just declare that we are not going to be down or sad about what we need to work on. Yeah. But, Father, I thank you that you've given us the opportunity to um, to give this and yield this over to you. And so, Lord, we just make the conscious choice to collectively as a body, as a family, as a community, just to hand over our brokenness. And, Lord, you are handing us something full and complete. And I thank you, Father, that we are good enough for that. And we say that we are good enough for that. We don't have to try to alter who we are. To make that work, Father, you already call us good. And so I thank you that you look upon us and you see that final peace um, that's working and moving and shifting in the kingdom of God. And I thank you that because we have things going on, does not make us a bad person, nor does it make you look at us any bad way. You love us in spite of, and Lord, we are so thankful for that. And so, Lord, I thank you that over this room, you are blessing us 
and you are establishing your kingdom in us. And Lord, build us up so we can be everything that we are called to be. And I thank you that although we have things to work on, that does not change your status about us. And I just thank you, Lord, that you um, have great things planned for us, that our destinies are secure in you. And I bless you, Father, that we're going to work on forgiving ourselves, letting things go, relinquishing control, um, stepping out of agreement with rebellion, and coming into the fullness of who you are and what you have mm, yes, over our Lord. lives. And so, Lord, mm. we just say thank you and we say yes to you, Lord, for what you have planned for us that is good and not evil. It's perfect. And there's an expected end to all of this. And so I thank you that we're going to, so you're helping us. You're teaching us how to worship while we wait until this is over, until we can see the other side of this. And I thank you, Father, that we're coming out of agreement and repent for anything that we have said that speaks negatively about our process. And I thank you that even in our frustration, you're still God. And so I thank you that, yes, although we get frustrated, we get irritated about some things, teach our mouths just to be slow to speak, that we may not speak anything ill against where we are, but just we, that we say, Lord, I just trust you until we see this over and done. And so I thank you that there is a goal to have us better. And I thank you that you're working on us so we can achieve that. Thank you, Father. So, for Lord, and for whatever Listerine is for, Lord, we just thank you that every, and when we go to the store, we're going to be able to find it. Amen. And I thank you that there's going to be no lack in our houses for whatever is coming. And so I bless you for insight and for revelation. And I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. So we bless you to uh, protect us as we travel to our destinations. And I thank you for keeping us all in perfect peace and perfect health. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We love Amen. you, Ms. Roz and Chris. Love you all. Love you all. See you Sunday. Sunday. Bye. Bye. Bye.